In the early 17th century, Johannes Kepler published his Laws of Planetary Motion. These are powerful descriptive laws that describe the shape of planetary orbits and motion of planets along those orbits, but did not reveal any deeper explanation as to a cause. Isaac Newton would explain this behavior as a consequence of his laws of motion and universal law of gravitation three generations later. Kepler's first law describes the shape of planetary orbits. The general shape is an ellipse. An ellipse is a geometric shape that can be created by putting two thumbtacks or toothpicks into a sheet of cardboard and tying a string loosely between the two as shown. If one takes a pen and pulls the string tight, then as the pen is moved, keeping the string tight, the string forces the pen to draw the shape of an ellipse. Each point where a thumbtack or toothpick was placed is called a focus. The plural for focus is foci. The law states that planets orbit on elliptical orbits with the Sun at one focus. Despite its equal importance when drawing an ellipse, there is nothing at the other focus but empty space. Two important features to know are the semi-major axis and eccentricity. The semi-major axis is the distance from the center of the ellipse to the farthest point. It is usually represented by the letter A. If we define C as the distance between the center and the focus, then the eccentricity is C divided by A. Eccentricity can intuitively be thought of as a measure of the flatness of the ellipse. For a given length of string, the farther apart the two foci, the greater the eccentricity. In other words, the farther apart the two foci, the flatter the ellipse. Eccentricity ranges from 0 to 1. An ellipse with an eccentricity of zero is a circle. Kepler's second law describes how a planet moves on its orbit. A planet moves along its orbit with a speed that changes in such a way that a line from the planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. For example, if each of the two shaded areas shown have been swept out in a one-month time interval, then these areas are equal. In order to sweep out Area 2, the planet has to move farther along its orbit in a one-month time interval. In order to do that, it has to move faster. What Kepler's second law is basically saying is that as a planet gets closer to the Sun, it speeds up and as it gets farther from the Sun, it slows down. The discussion about swept areas is the way Kepler quantified this changing speed. In this class, Circular orbits are often assumed in order to simplify discussions and examples. In our solar system, planets have fairly circular orbits, so this assumption is reasonable. If a planet has a circular orbit, its speed along its orbit is constant. Kepler's third law is basically an equation that makes a connection between a planet's semi-major axis distance and its orbital period. Recall that the orbital period is the amount of time it takes for a planet to completely orbit around the Sun. In this equation, the semi-major axis is an astronomical unit and the orbital period, represented by P, is in Earth years. The semi-major axis to the third power is equal to the orbital period to the second power. Each of the equations shown is the same, but are shown solved specifically for the semi-major axis or for the period. It is useful to point out here that the semi-major axis of a planet's orbit and the planet's average distance from the Sun are basically the same thing. That is, we can interpret Kepler's third law as saying that the farther a planet's average distance from the Sun, the longer its orbital period. This graph is a plot of the relationship between the orbital period and distance from the Sun. Distance is on the horizontal axis in astronomical units and the period is on the vertical axis in years. The increasing period with increasing distance is apparent in this graph. This next graph shows the relationship between the speed of a planet on a circular orbit and its average distance from the Sun. Remember that when a planet has a circular orbit its speed along that orbit is constant. The graph shows that planets that are at greater distances from the Sun move more slowly on their orbits than planets orbiting closer to the Sun. Two planetary orbits are compared on this slide. Assume both orbits lie flat on the screen. Orbit 2 is clearly flatter and thus has a greater eccentricity. However, they have been drawn to have the same semi-major axis distance and thus, according to Kepler's third law, planets orbiting on them would have the same orbital period. 
Once Isaac Newton discovered his laws of motion and universal law of gravitation, he would show that Kepler's laws aren't restricted to describing only planetary motion around the Sun. They apply universally to any object orbiting any other object. For example, they apply to planets orbiting other stars, moons orbiting planets, spacecraft orbiting the Earth, stars orbiting the galactic center, galaxies orbiting other galaxies, etc. Kepler's laws are much more general and powerful than even Kepler would have imagined.